right guys welcome back to another m creator tutorial today what we're going to be looking at is fluid pumps and how i was how i basically created them for this particular project last episode what we worked on was the pipes today is the pump and then finally what we'll be looking at is the machine that you probably all been waiting for which is a quarry so um if we go over to this little pond of water we can uh demonstrate how the pumps actually work so what we need is to go here and then we'll grab a pump and we're going to grab a pipe just to kind of get an idea what it looks like so for pumps what we have is basically a direction for direction thing that can basically rotate the um pipe connection for the um pipes so as you can see here all the little dark dots basically indicate what side it's going to be hooked up to so that's important and then we have a power conversion like power unit that goes directly to the top of the block so if we grab a cable you can see that it will connect up with these blocks here and pipes do connect up to these particular parts so once you have that kind of in mind you can kind of start playing out the um what do you call it, the pr procedures and stuff like that. We'll be taking a look at that in just a second. So how do you get one of these to work? It's basically set up so if you have it above water, one block of water, that's all you need. And then you can run a cable of some sort. Just run it out here just so it's in the daylight. And we'll get a solar panel set up so we have some power coming into this. And that will give it the power it needs to actually start pumping. And then we can actually get the pipes out here. So we'll go over to here. And then we should be able to see um, liquid going into these pipes. So if we go use the data command, we can get the MBT of the fluid in this block. So as you can see, it has already 1,000, which is um, one bucket of water. Uh, in this particular pipe and it's a connection it's also got a id system called forge fluid flow which is the same idea that we use for the cables just um, with fluid in the name uh, this is important for knowing what direction uh, it's coming away from the generator itself so basically if we decide to branch out this way then in like a couple minutes or whatever it will automatically detect that and start sending power this way as well so it will properly split the energy based on what the requirement is for that particular side now if we had more than one generator on this particular thing then what would happen is it would just basically normalize of the direction that it would basically go so for example um, wherever the medium point of this particular one is, I'm not sure, like one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So this would probably take priority up to this part. And then this one would get up to about here. And then this one would take priority along this line here. So that's basically how the, um, generation thing works or the, the forge fl flow and forge fluid flow. So um okay now let's get into the tutorial for actually the block added we'll get there's only like three three major things the block the um procedure for when it's added and the update text so it's not too complicated for any of them so in the example workspace that i have if you go under fluid and then pump and then you have all the inform or all the parts that you need i'm not sure yeah, so there is one called uh, fluid blocks, which or fluid slash blocks. I can't remember what I'm using this for, but I will eventually uh, figure it out. Uh, we'll keep an eye open for the um, this particular uh, namespace. It's under the forge directory though, so or forge namespace. But the pumps are in this particular one. Um, I'm not sure if it's used or not. I'll keep an eye open uh, when I'm explaining the tutorial. So we have only three components that make up this particular pump. We have the pump block, the plump, pump block added, and pump update tick. So the update tick is the most complex. We'll cover how to build them all in today. Uh, don't worry about that. And the pump we'll start with. So first thing that we need is to set our directions. This is going to be the north direction. 
So it's really important to texture it based on what locations you're going to be setting up because it's going to be determined when you're setting up your northeast west cable or pipe connections as well as the cable to connections if you decide to put use power for it as well. So we have power at the top and then the f the um, pump or plug pipe um, pipe connection for the north direction by default. So this is basically how it's set up. And then underneath you didn't actually see the texture but there is like a little um, round part to indicate that that's where it would be pulling from. And then over here uh, we have the southwest northeast direction for the axis on player side so we can basically make sure the block rotates on all four axes um, minus the y axis so it doesn't like go up or down for rotation but it will go um, kind of like a any direction that's east west south or north so it can rotate any one of those directions uh, we do have a solid block because we don't have a custom model if you want to add a custom model you can just make sure it's on cutout or translucent or cutout mipped uh, depending on what you want to go with for the rendering block we don't need to worry about that um, any important settings here you might want to set the material type and uh, put it under a category um, and set your tool particular thing but outside of that this is pretty much uh, all customizable how you were how you want it I don't really see any um, requirements for this particular one here. You will need a one tick delay uh, for your timer. So it will um, need a, a ticking procedure because that's where it's going to be setting the pump system from. So make sure this is set to one on your tick rate and set your map color. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to do on this page. Tile Entity, you will need to enable this because we will be using um, Forge Fluid, so we need to enable this. I disable the inventory slots. I always set it to zero when I do disable it and just to use MBT or something. If I'm not using an inventory, I try not to have the block to have a inventory at all, so I try to keep it at zero. And then these by default are checked, so you might want to disable that just to be on the safe side because you're not really using items at all, so you can just disable those. Uh, Forge Fluid, um, we actually are not using Forge Fluid per se. Um, we are sending Forge Fluid, so it's a little bit different in the in regards of what we're doing. So with the pump itself, it doesn't store actual fluid itself, it just sends it. So we don't actually need to enable Forge Fluid, but we do have a on like a energy storage system which allows us to determine and subtract energy to send the fluid. So we will need this particular one in order to make the system work. Uh, you could have a system where your block itself has on storage fluid but i don't really see why you would need that because it's always going to be sending it to the next block right so it might not work that way with the forge flow fluid flow system so you might want to just keep it similar we, we are using energy so this is important triggers uh block added this is really simple to actually cover so we're running it on server side we do that by basically going to our flow control grabbing an if statement going to logic not and then going to world procedures data and then scrolling down far enough where you can see is provided world client side so we would basically do that what this does is it will allow us to run it on server side which is important and then what we're doing is we're basically using our cable connection value for basically top here so we're testing if it is at the top you can find that particular block under block procedures and then actions and then right here is where it is you basically type that uh, name for your cable in so we would put our cable connection there and then the cables will connect up to this particular block you want to make sure it's also true anything that is set to false will be ignored um, by default all things are set to false when you're using logic statements so you don't need to worry about dis defining all the other sides or anything like that. Just the ones that you want it to connect to. So that's where we only have this 
um, short of a procedure system. And then what we're doing is we need to test for the direction of the block. So we grabbed another if statement. And then we needed a orange operator to test for the block direction. So we can get the block direction under block uh, data or block procedures slash data. And then we grab that. And you could use the provided uh, block state. That would be an option. But um, I like to keep things as comp or simple as possible for the um, dependencies. Uh, pretty much everything is going to have some sort of XYZ and world procedure system. So if I needed to carry this over to something that would basically support something higher, then it's not a big de deal. But if it, it's something like an update tick and I had to carry it over, then if it had something like block state or something else didn't support provided block state, then this wouldn't always work. So I try to keep it as or simple as possible when it, in sense of the dependencies. So basically I just use the current block location and that just allows it to use X, Y, and Z and world instead. So we can go ahead and grab a directional block that's under the, um, Minecraft components, and then we can grab the directional one. So basically, if you weren't paying attention, uh, there was the um, get block at, and there, it's under world data, it's right at the top here for that one. It's basically the equivalent of testing a specific block. So we're just getting the block at the very location where the script is running, and we're testing for the direction. So we want this one to be set to north, and then we're going to set the condition for these ones, a few extra else if statements so we can test for the other directions. And we're going to just duplicate this and basically move it over down below and set the east, south, and west directions. And then that part's all set up. Now we just need to get the um, pipe connections all set up in this part. So what we have is our north connection and then our... All right, so again, we're doing it on server side. This is important for uh, making sure all the procedures are running on the server and not client. Uh, we don't really need it on client. So again, if you wanna find that, you can go to if statement, logic, not, and then we can cover the data for world procedures and grab the client side, so like that. And then what we have is a couple of local variables here. So we have um, a whole bunch of them. We have one for the block that we're using for the um, liquid. So rather than you know specify the liquid all over the procedure, what we can do is we can just test for the liquid in one particular variable and store it in memory so we can basically use it any part of the procedure without having to load it multiple times. So that's really important. And then we have our forge flow system. We use uh, our for forge fluid flow system, which is set to 124. Same idea as forge flow system. It's You want to set this to a high number uh, like 124. That will allow it to go 124 blocks away from the current block. Uh, it will go along the pipes and subtract each value. So it can go that far distance before needing another pump uh, to expand it further uh, down the line. So if you, it should be able to cover most complex systems for forge energy if you need to use something higher than you can do that, but just keep in mind that it will have to remember all that stuff. Uh, send amount, so basically this is how much you're gonna be sending for um, the amount of fluid to the block, the first uh, pump or pipe. So basically the first pipe will be sending a increments of 100 and I'll try to test um, how much it can do that. And then we have our connections for the um, the same variables that we used for the connection pipes are the block added. So we're using the same variables here for that particular one. And all the local variables are on this side. So you can see all these ones in action. There's also one called fill. I don't know if I used that one. Let me just double check. Yeah, I did use one called fill, which uh, allows me to test if the amount of fluid that we can send. We'll get to that in a little bit. 
So to get the variables, what we're going to do is it's really simple. Once you create a variable over here on the local variables tab, you can go to custom variables and then you want to set the um, number ones like this and you're going to select the variable names. So for example, we have forge fluid flow and we have um, amount. So we would set those two like that. We get a number block from this one from the math tab and then we set our number here and we set the other number here and then same thing with the block type only we're selecting what block which can be found under the minecraft components we would basically select the particular one that we want for that so in this case it would be water and we would want still water to make sure that it would um, be set up properly i know it says water but you want the still one and then we have the string ones which are the kind of the green color so we're going to be setting up all these we need four of those because we have four directions the block can go so we're going to set north east south which is already set and then west so that would be that and then we would need to get a string from text top right here with the two quotes and then you put your string in there for the directions that you know, the value is so that's basically this part right up here and then what we would want to do is make sure that we have our forge flow or forge fluid flow system in place so we're testing for the direction of the block then what we're doing is we're testing the capacity of the block next to it so we need to test if that particular block uh, supports equal to or one or equal to or greater than one uh, for the tank capacity so basically the tank capacity allows us to test if it has um if it supports any forge fluid so basically if it can hold fluid this will basically run and go okay you can accept forge fluid we're going to make sure that we can send it to you and then what we're doing is we're basically testing for our direction so because we're going north what we want to do is make sure that that tag for our south system uh, because north and then the opposite of north is south we need to make sure that it's facing south in order to support the uh, direction so we're going north on that direction and we're testing for the south for the string so our south one is this one right here and then what we're doing is we're just going ahead and setting the forge fluid flow and then we're setting the direction and then we're setting the amount of our forge fluid flow which is 124 for that particular block this handles the forge fluid flow system so basically it gets the motion running for the pipes to actually start decreasing over time so we need this part in order for on our generators in order to make it work so to create that, I'll cover the first part because it's basically the exact same thing, just with different uh, rotations. So we can do that easily by creating an if statement, going to logic, grabbing an and statement. We need um, an equal sign operator. Same color as the if statement. We're going to right click on the equal sign and then go and. And just to make it a little tighter, we're going to go in external inputs when we right click on it. And then we're going to duplicate that once so we can test for three things. And then we need a direction, so we're going to grab the directional one. And then what we need is to get the block direction, go under block data, direct, get direction of block, and then we're going to go under data again and get the block location. Again, this is just my preference of doing it. You can use provided block state if you want to. And then we need a direction block, so we'll go under Minecraft components for that one. And then we set the direction that we want for that. And this should be based on the direction that the block can rotate for the pump. So make sure that you have all those set up. So it's according to what directions the pump can rotate to. All right. And then what we need to do is grab a number operator. And we're going to test if it is equal to or greater than. So like the and statement, we can click on the equal sign with this one and go equal to or greater than and then what we need to test for is one so basically if it's any value greater than zero then what we want is to run the script so that's important because this tests if it supports forge fluid 
Um, if we do it, there isn't actually a block for this in the energy and fluid for liquids to actually get um, like the energy ones where it says can extract or anything like that. It doesn't have those particular ones. So instead what we have to do is basically test the capacity of the tank and if it's not supported then it won't have any value greater than one. So we can just use that as our test condition. So in this case what we would do is grab the get capacity of tank and then we select tank one and then our coordinates and this will allow us to test for that particular thing. Uh, keep in mind that you will need your directional system set up. So this should be the opposite uh, direction as what you're running. So for this case, it's south. So we're using the north direction. It's opposite of that. So it's south. And then what we need to do is make sure that the position is correctly set up. So we need to go with a math operator. And for north, what we need to do is set our coordinates to uh, z minus one because that's the north direction. So we can grab another number block from math again and set that to z minus one. And that part's set up now. So all we need to do is get our direction for that particular cable. So in this case, we would go ahead and uh, go under block data, scroll down quite a while until you get to this particular one for MBT. And then what you want to do is make sure that the direction is also north. So we want to test for the north block or block of the direction of north. And then what we need to do is replace this with our variable. So this was, should be your south variable, again, opposite of your direction that you're working with for your block. So we're going to grab south and that's all set up now. So that's basically what you need to do for each direction. And then for your forge fluid flow for the event, what you need to do is go to your um, actions, grab a number operator for your MBT or not operator, your number MBT variable. And you're going to set this to forge flow. So basically forge fluid flow, this needs to be the exact same name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the Z direction to Z minus one. because so we want to basically set that particular variable um, or that particular block at the next to it to Z minus one, because we're not actually sending anything, no fluid from this particular block, right? So we need to make sure that the block over there starts uh, to get the number that we need. And then for this, what you can do is you can just get a custom variable and you want to replace this with your forge fluid flow uh, variable, which is this one right here. So if we select that, forge fluid flow, and now this is basically one modular design for the entire script for the forge fluid flow system. You can basically expand it from that point. If you need to pause, I'll just kind of keep it in the screen right here for a couple seconds. So you can basically go ahead and take a look how the rest of it's set up. All right, so that's that part. And then the other part we have, I'll just minimize that one and then we can expand the other one. This one handles the fluid, uh, sending the fluid and testing for it all and all that other uh, mechanical stuff. So there's a couple components that make this part up. First one is basically we're testing if the block uh, under the current block has water. So if there's water underneath the block of the pump, then what we want to do is test if the block has at least a energy capacity of 32. So if there's 32 equal to or greater than 32 in this particular in the pump itself, then it will run all this, which basically handles the sending of fluid to the, the pipes. So when it does that, what we're testing for is the direction and the, if it has a connection for that particular one, then we're going to be testing it how much fluid we can actually send to it. And then we're going to fill that particular block up for the pipe. And then we're going to extract um, energy because we don't actually need to extract the fluid from this particular block. We just need to extract the energy. 
uh, because that's what we're using. And then we're extracting 32 from that. You can make this number different based on other conditions if you wanted to, but this is just a simple form. So let's quickly find all these blocks. Uh, we can go ahead and go to our if statement. We're gonna need an if statement to start with. And then what we're gonna need is a logic oper or logic for and. So we're gonna set that like we did with the other one. And then we're also going to need uh, to get a block operator. So we're going to grab the, let me zoom, zoom in, it might be a little easier to see. Uh, is block the same as and then block so we want that one right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the data one get a block at current position and we want to make sure that this is for the fluid so we want to make sure that this is y minus one that's where I am testing for the water underneath it so we go y minus and then we set this to one, and then we can test for our liquid that we want to pull in. So in this case, we can set uh, still water, and then it will, oh, actually, no, we just uh, set the water variable. So rather than use the thing, we can just plop our water variable down, which is defined up here. And then what we can do is we can test if the block has energy. So for example, if it has equal to or greater than, and we want our value for how much energy we're gonna be using. So in this case, I used 32. And we just grabbed a number operator from the logic tab, this one right here. So we can basically use that. And we're getting the energy for the block. So basically energy of block, not energy capacity. So we want the energy of block and that part's all set up now so this is the main part of the script now we need to do this basically again for our conditional part so for example we need another and statement and then what we need is to test for the direction so go under logic grab the operator for the that part and then the data get block direction You'll also need the coordinates for this and then the directional type. So in this case, we're going to go with a north direction just to set this up a little bit easier. And then what we need is our MBT. So we're going to go under this tab, scroll all the way down, grab our MBT one. And we want to test if that is on the Z axis. So we can go ahead and grab a math operator and we're going to subtract this by one so we can grab a math math number and we'll subtract z minus one and that part is all almost set up we can now set our opposite direction here so we would want our south direction because that's the connection that we're going to be opposite of north for this particular one if we're texting for the pipe then we always want to use the opposite name for the direction that you're using. So Z minus is basically your um, north direction. Z plus is your south direction. Uh, e, um, X plus is east and X minus is west. So the, that's the easiest way I can explore uh, explain the directional part. So whatever direction it is facing. So in this case, this is north like you're testing from for the north side, you're going to use the opposite direction for the variable. Okay, so that part's done. Now we just need to test for the fluid to see how much we can send. So we created a fluid variable up here, or fill, which allows us to test the amount and store in memory so we can use it and later on. So what we're doing is we're testing for the uh, test fill so we need to go to forge energy and fluid we're going to go test filling and then what we need is we need to do set this as our test amount or our send amount I think that's the send amount yeah so the send amount and then we need to select what kind of liquid we're going to be sending so this is going to be the same as your pipes uh, in our case we're using a water 
for our pipes. So you want to set the water uh, system same as your pipes up here, or it will not work. And then we need our direction for this. So we're going to just duplicate that off of this one. We already created it, so we don't need to worry about it. And we need to set our direction as well to south. So in this case, we can just grab our direction up here and set that to south. And basically, whatever remaining value that um, comes out of the outcome of this uh, test will be stored to the variable. So if it doesn't, if it can't actually send anything uh, to the block, if it's uh, lower than equal to or zero, then it will just not send anything. Uh, but it will still use the energy, so keep that in mind. All right, and then what we need is to fill that particular block. So we're going to go and grab a fill block, and we're going to set this to our fill variable. So we can put that to there, and then we will need our water, set our water, and we need the direction. So this should be north for whatever direction that you have. And then we need to set the direction side, so south. And then we need to extract energy. So if we go to forge fluid, extract, and then we're gonna set this to the amount of energy we're using. So in this case, we're using 32. So 32, and we don't need to set these two directions at all. It can just do that all the way through. You technically don't need to do it right, like every entry, but reason why I'm doing that is because if it's not that particular direction, it might have issues with, um, sending like it, will, it would run every time and uh basically what i would want it to do is only s extract the energy when all these conditions are met at the top here so if there's fluid below the block if there is uh, energy equal to 32 if there is um the block uh, direction that it's facing and if there's a block pipe there now if it's if these two things aren't true then what it would do is just do it every iteration without actually sending fluid so i wanted to make sure that it only sent it with fluid or extracted with when there was fluid being sent so that's basically that part and then you would just basically use the gear icon and then add else if statements for the other four directions and that's all you need to do for that part all right so that's it you just make sure that this runs after your forge fluid part your forge flow fluid flow system and you got your procedure all set up uh, this is just more compact because we didn't go with all the uh, additional directions and stuff but it's basically the same thing as you can see in the video so hopefully that helps if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out